Well, guys, with 2015 very quickly coming to a close and my worst list done, it is now time for me to do my top 10 best films of 2015. Now, doing that was very hard to do. It really was. And I'm surprised by how hard it really was, but honestly, it was very hard. Mainly because in the beginning of this year, there really weren't that many films that were that great. I'm like, okay, this should be really easy. But towards the end, there were so many great ones. I mean, I gave almost 20 films an A+, plus by end of the year. I was really shocked. But yeah, I almost gave 20 films. I mean, that's how much I loved all these films. And because of that, it was very hard for me to compile a top 10 list. So then I'm like, okay, let's go one step beyond. Let's do a top 12 list. And then I had a friend encourage me to do a top 15 list, which was even a more genius idea, because there are just films that I can't make a top 10 list and not have this movie on here. I'm like, oh, but that movie's not there, and I need that there. So in order for me to do that, I made this a top 15. I think it's a lot better. I think you guys will be like, okay, that makes more sense. And I'll just feel more satisfied with this list if I made a top 15. So... I did make a top 15, and I'm happy that I did, but just like any other list, there are honorable mentions, because this was a very hard list to compile, and these are films that definitely deserve to be mentioned, and I really wanted to put these movies on my list, but there were just these other films that came in, and they were just so great that I couldn't, um, that I couldn't fit these films on my list, but let's just talk about them. The first one is Carol. Um, Carol was a great movie. I really do love Carol, and it's a movie that I strongly recommend you all check out, especially um, for people that are trying to, you know, struggling with trying to be themselves and things like that. Features two of the strongest performances of the year. Definitely check out Carol if you haven't already. Incredible film. Definitely going to hear about it towards Oscar time. Um, Experimenter was another movie I want to put on this list. Um, Experimenter is all about, you know, when you go into this room and they put you on this, um, you know, um, they put you on this machine that you're basically forced to answer questions, and if the person gets a question wrong, supposedly there's a man being tortured, but there's not. Very, very interesting the way they did that, and a very thought-provoking film. Definitely really loved uh, Experimenter. Uh, Sicario as well, there was another one I really wanted to put on this list, as well as Bridge of Spies. Um, another movie I really wanted to put on this list, I actually never reviewed you guys, Amy. Amy's a documentary about Amy Winehouse that is unlike any other documentary I've seen before. Definitely check it out. I really wanted to put it on this list just so I could talk about it, but then when I was thinking, I'm like, I'm not just going to put it on this list just to put it on this list. You know, if it's not one of the best films of the year, I'm not going to put it on this list. It is an amazing film. It does get a 5 out of 5, but... It's just not on this list. I just could not fit it there. Mistress America, really, really wanted to put this movie on my list. Really wanted to. I mean, just the examination of these two, and the same with End of the Tour. These two films are very similar, and I really wanted to put both those on my list. Uh, Love and Mercy, I really wanted to put there, but I just couldn't find a place for it. Creep, oh my god, Creep was so close to being on my list, but unfortunately, it just wasn't. It wasn't on my list. It wasn't there, unfortunately. And then Brooklyn as well. Um, Brooklyn, I really wanted my list, but sadly, these films were not on my list. They were excluded. But now let's get to my top 15. Now, let me tell you guys that grades don't matter. If I gave a movie an A plus and I gave, you know, said better things about this movie and said, oh, that's the best movie of the year, that doesn't really matter. This is simply based on how I would watch them and how I enjoyed them. And there are some films you'll be like, why is that on your list? But not Carol, things like that. Again, it's my list. And there are certain movies, like I said, that I just would not feel comfortable with doing this list. And I wouldn't feel satisfied. I wouldn't be like, that's my list without putting these films on, especially number 15. Number 15 is a movie that I knew the second I saw it, it would be on this top 10 list, and I knew it would be probably number 10 at the time, but since I made top 15, I'm like, okay, this will be number 15, and I just, I love this movie. I really don't feel it's getting the credit it deserves. It still is, in my opinion, probably my, one of my favorite movies, one of the most fun movies I've seen all year, and that is Kingsman. I love the shit out of this movie. I mean, Kingsman is everything I love. It had awesome characters. It had a great cast. I mean, you had breakout role for Taron Edgerton, who's really starting to branch out and definitely has a very promising career ahead of him. Uh, Colin Firth, man, Colin Firth in this movie was just awesome. The church scene especially, we all remember that. That was so badass. Sam Jackson as the villain. I mean, it really doesn't get better than that. 
just the cool gadgets as well really made me want to be in the Secret Service. Just Kingsman, if you haven't seen it, it's awesome. It really is. I've recommended it to so many people, and I can't recommend it enough. It's an awesome film. I really do recommend you check it out. It really is the summer movie that never was. I mean, let's face it, this was not the most eventful summer. There were some very good summer films, but this really wasn't the most eventful one, and mainly it's because of movies like this. Kingsman had everything a great summer movie should. Kingsman has everything a great action movie should, and everything a great movie should. Should. Kingsman in general is just a great movie and one of the most entertaining, fun, awesome experiences I had watching all year. Absolutely love it. And it has a very shocking death. I still can't get over that death. And definitely check out Kingsman if you haven't already. So that is number 15. Uh, number 14 is a film I just recently reviewed, Youth. Um, Youth, I knew was going to be on this list. I didn't know where to put it, but I figured I'd put it number 14. Youth is a fantastic movie. I absolutely love Youth. It very much examines the difference between young and old, how someone old looks at something and how someone young looks at something and how, um, you know, when someone gets older, they start to want to act younger and don't want to act like they actually are. And I think this movie really just examined all of that very, very well. I mean, Michael Caine and Harvey Keitel, two of the best performances of the year, without a doubt. I mean, they were fantastic in this movie, especially Michael Caine in that one scene. I mean, oh my God, that twist in the movie almost had me in tears. And if there is anything I can say about this movie that gets, you know, you're not interested already or you don't, you're not as interested as you want to be, just watch the end of this movie. The end of this movie is truly amazing and definitely one of my favorite endings of the year. Definitely check out Youth. Huge surprise. I did not expect this movie to be as great as it was, but it really is fantastic and definitely deserved to be on my list. Uh, number 13 is Creed. Creed, I knew, had to be on this list. At first, I was going to leave it out, but I'm like, no, Creed needs to be on this list. Creed is simply one of the best movies of its genre. It really is. I mean, something I love about it is that it could have easily just been a forced Rocky sequel. It could have easily been that. It could have been like a Jurassic World or a Terminator Genesis, but Creed worked because it did exactly what a, you know, um, new movie in a franchise should do. It paid tribute to the original. It didn't try to be like the original. It tried to be its own thing, but it paid tribute, and it just, re and they revamped it so, so well. It was more of a story between um, these two, you know, these two men, Rocky and um, Donnie, you know, two men that just, they had things going on in their life, and this bond that they had was very strong, the fighting scenes, I mean, one scene, I, I never said this, but one scene was done all in one take, and it's incredible the way they did that, I absolutely loved everything about Creed, it's an incredible film, if you haven't seen it, it's thrilling, it's almost as great as the original Rocky, honestly, I think it's as great as the original Rocky, I loved everything about Creed, definitely check it out if you haven't, because Creed is awesome, I absolutely loved it. Um, number thir number 12 is one of my, one of the, was almost very high on this list, it almost was, but there were just other movies that I just put higher just because I wanted to, and number 12, we have a movie that proves that you don't need, um, action scenes or big scenes like that to just carry a film, all you need is a very good screenplay, and that's exactly what Spotlight had, Spotlight surprised the hell out of me, I mean, I remember I watched the trailer, didn't really think much of it, but as you guys can see, I have the poster. I loved everything about Spotlight. It was shocking. It was revealing. It was very hard to listen to at points. I mean, just hearing these people, these victims, you know, talk about, um, you know, these rape victims, talk about what this priest did to them. It's disturbing as hell to listen to, but it's portrayed in such the perfect fashion. Nothing is being portrayed as, oh, you should agree with this or you should agree with that. It's not a movie that has an opinion. It just tells you the facts and leaves you to decide, is this right or wrong? Is it justified what they're doing? Things like that. It doesn't try to portray the, you know, people working at Spotlight in any way. It simply is just a perfect example of a of how to do a biopic. It's a fact-based story, and it sticks to that, and that's one of the reasons why Spotlight worked as well as it did. I loved every minute of Spotlight. Amazing film. Definitely check it out if you haven't, and I can't wait to watch it again. So Spotlight definitely is number 12. Number 11, another movie that I knew was going to be left off the top 10 list, and I'm like, I can't do this top 10 list without leaving this movie off, because everyone's been talking about it. It's a movie that I personally love, and I really need to talk about it. The Martian um, is number 11, and I absolutely love The Martian. The Martian is just an awesome film. 
I mean, this is a movie that could be very depressing, and it could be very, very sad, you know, us seeing Matt Damon alone in space all by himself, it sounds very depressing, it really does, I mean, him being left on this planet, it sounds very sad, but it's not because the whole movie's about keeping that positive attitude, and trying to just take everything that's negative and turn into something positive, that's exactly what Matt Damon's character Mark Watney does in this movie. He is by far one of my favorite characters of the entire year. He definitely deserves to be nominated for an Oscar. One of the best roles Matt Damon has ever played. It also really brought out the comedic chops in him. I mean, I knew Matt Damon was funny, but I did not know he was as funny as he really was. I mean, he was awesome in this movie. So, so funny. He loved everything about The Martian. Just really, Matt Damon killed it, and he was awesome. So The Martian is definitely number 11. Number 10, you guys are going to be a bit shocked that this is as low as it is, and um, for a while this was very, very high, but after watching, you know, the past several films, I'm like, you know what, this is a bit lower than I actually thought it was, mainly because not that I don't love this film, I love this movie, in fact, it's probably one of my favorite action movies of all time, and I think it's as great as everyone says it is, it's just, I wanted to, I just put it a bit lower because all the other films I'm going to talk about, I just like more than this movie, and that, of course, is Mad Max Fury Road, I mean, damn did this movie come out of nowhere i mean i remember i heard about all of the these five out of fives and i'm like holy shit this movie is going to be incredible and it really was i mean it's this incredible story of survival and bravery and just living in this world a lot of this movie that i love is just us seeing this world seeing that this is a wasteland this is an apocalyptic disaster and them having to get through it and basically having to do some things that would be unjust, but in this world, it just makes sense that they have to do that. Furiosa, Furiosa was still one of the biggest badasses I've ever seen. Awesome character, as well as Mad Max. Tom Hardy was perfectly cast in that role. The style of this film, the look of it, um, the cinematography, still some of the best of the year. Not my favorite. My favorite cinematography of the year, without a doubt, is The Revenant. That's not on this list. Uh, that's not on this list, but it should be mentioned. Um, but Mad Max Fury Road, incredible movie. Absolutely loved it with an incredibly menacing villain and just incredibly very well done choreographed action scenes I absolutely loved. One of the best action films I think I've ever seen. If you haven't already, check out Mad Max Fury Road and I can't wait for the next one, which I believe is called The Wasteland, which that itself is awesome. So Mad Max Fury Road, if you haven't seen, definitely check it out. It really is an incredible, very impactful film. You'll definitely love it. Okay. So, coming in at number nine, again, this movie was higher originally. It was much higher than um, I thought it was going to be. I just had to lower it. Like I said, there are just some films that I wanted to put higher on this list, but then other films came along. I'm just like, those are better, and I'd rather watch that. But this is still an incredible film that I can't wait to watch again. Number nine, without a doubt, is Beasts of No Nation. Beasts of No Nation is an incredible movie that I don't think enough people have seen. I've really not heard a lot of people talk about this movie. With a lot of movies on my list, uh, by the way, a lot of movies on this list you might not have heard as many people talk about because they're just not as well known, and that's just because of the movies I saw. But Beasts of No Nation, like I said, I don't usually like a lot of war films. They're not usually my thing. I usually find them just, you know, good characters, but nothing I'd ever watch again. Beasts of No Nation, though, is a character-driven story. It's the most terrifying war film you could think of because it's all about children fighting in this war. Like I said, there's nothing more ter there's nothing more sad than the face of a child, and you really love seeing that here. Seeing a goo, what he had to go through, him having to realize that, you know, he needs to put all of that fear and be brave and things like that. Even though he didn't necessarily want to do this, he really had no choice. He had to fight and he had to do some things that he might not have been okay with and that's one of the reasons why Beast of Nation just works so well for me. The kid in this movie, Abraham Atta, has not gotten enough talk about. I mean, he is incredible. He really is. He carries the entire film. Um, Idris Elba, of course, was great, too. He definitely did a great job. The combat scenes, I mean, the ending of this movie is incredible. The way they set up his family life, everything about Beast of Nation was just so, so great. I loved everything about it. It was such an effective movie. So much better than I think it could have been. In, and just because of the fact that this is actually going on, there are children that have to fight in war, things like that, it does happen. And that's one of the reasons why Beast of No Nation is so sad. And that's one of the reasons why it's simply one of the best films of the year. Beast of No Nation, without a doubt. If you have not seen it, definitely check it out. It's amazing, and I highly, highly recommend it. It's an incredible movie. Um, 
Number eight, we have a movie that I just rewatched a couple of days ago, and I'm very happy I did because I tried to figure out it's on my top ten list. I just needed to know where it was my top ten list. And after watching it, I definitely feel this is a good spot for it. And that is Inside Out. Inside Out is an amazing movie. I mean, it's one of Pixar's best. It really is. I mean, that's really the way you can sum it up is that it's one of Pixar's best. And I do agree with this. Brilliant. A masterpiece. It really is a masterpiece. I mean... I've never seen an animated film for kids just go so deep into someone's subconscious, and not just because the movie's called Inside Out, but just in general. Think of how deep this movie really is. It's all about growing up and, you know, letting go of things that you might have had as a big deal before. You know, she, Riley, the character, she's had phases in her life that she just is growing out of because she's getting older and she doesn't fully understand that yet. And I definitely really love that. And the way all these emotions come together is just, it's fantastic to watch. And I know people are saying the movie is all about pu puberty. And yeah, it kind of is about that. And you know what? That's actually very interesting because that's what Riley's going through. She's going through growing up. She's growing through being an adult. And, you know, she's going through... Go, you know, um, blossoming from that young, innocent kid to a much more mature, um, young, young adult. And that definitely is what's happening to her in this movie. I absolutely loved everything about Inside Out. The voice talents were perfectly casted. I mean, let, let's just talk about, I mean, I don't think I've given enough credit to, um, Louis Black in this movie. Louis Black, guys, was awesome. I mean, I watched him again in this movie. Just so awesome. He was so great. Uh, Bing Bong, that character of Bing Bong. We all remember what happened to Bing Bong. If you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil it, but Bing Bong, oh my god. Inside Out is simply one of Pixar's best. If I had to recommend a Pixar film, Inside Out would definitely be up there. It's the perfect example of what Pixar can do. It toys your emotions. It can make you laugh and cry at the same time. That's exactly what Inside Out did. Amazing film. If you haven't checked it out, definitely do yourself a favor and do so because it really is an amazing film. And I loved everything about Inside Out. All right. Number seven is another film I've recently reviewed. It's a movie that I didn't know if it was going to be my top ten list. I really didn't, but it really surprised the hell out of me. I mean, I've heard people say this movie's amazing, but not a lot have had it on their top ten list. Really, not a lot have. A lot have said, you know, it's an honorable mention, but not on their top ten list. But you know what? When I saw this movie, I'm like, no, this movie is definitely on my top ten list because it's one of the greatest biopics I've seen, even though it's not really a biopic, and that is Steve Jobs. Number seven is definitely Steve Jobs. Mainly because, like I said, this is a story of father and daughter. It's a story of these two trying to get connected and trying to maintain a relationship, even though Steve Jobs doesn't really know how to love something other than his products because he was never loved. You know, he was abandoned as a child by his parents, and all of this stuff we find out about him was so interesting. It did what a great biopic did. It told you things you already know. But added in a bunch of things that we didn't know, and I really love seeing that show, the struggle he went through, and it made things just so intense through dialogue. Jeff Daniels, I mean, Seth Rogen, such an amazing cast in this movie. Everything about Steve Jobs, I loved. Amazing film. Michael Fosbender was perfectly casted. I think still, like I said, has in the bag to win Best Actor of the Academy Awards. He definitely is going to. And if you haven't seen Steve Jobs, definitely check it out. It is an amazing film. Divided into three big events in his life that I really loved, and it's a it's it's many things. I know people have said, oh, maybe it's not that original, because yeah, it does show like the rise and fall. It does show, or like the fall and rise. It's kind of like the reverse in this movie. Um, and yeah, it does have some events about his life, but like I said, it really is a story about father and daughter, and that's one of the reasons Steve Jobs just works as well as it does. So definitely number seven is Steve Jobs. If you haven't seen it. Check it out right now. Incredible movie. Absolutely love Steve Jobs. Number six. Okay, you guys are going to kill me. You guys are going to kill me, honestly. I mean, you're like, really, this movie again? I'm sorry. I can't stop talking about this movie. I told you guys, it's going to be the movie I watched the most this year. This is the movie that I knew was going to be my top ten list from February when I reviewed it. And ever since then, I've watched it about 11 times. I really have. I mean, it's just such a great film, and it's a movie I can't stop watching. Number six, and I knew this was on my list. I'm just trying to figure out where. For a while, it was number four, but it's not now. For a while, I'm like, should this even be on my list? But I'm like, no, 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 no. I can't not have this movie on my list. I need to have it up there. Number six, without a doubt, is the last five years. I mean, talk about a perfect representation of a relationship gone wrong. That's exactly what the last five years is. 
one of the reasons why Carol's not on this list is because of the last five years. I just love everything that this movie did. I mean, this movie is not your typical musical. It's really not. It's it's divided from hers goes forward, you know, hers goes backwards in time, and his goes forwards. And just the way that they look at these two things and the way that they examine their relationship and showing everything that's happened to them is so well done. It's a very heartbreaking film. It can also be very charming at times. I mean, like I've said, you don't want these two together, but when you're seeing them, you realize why they worked at the time, but there were just things that happened to them that didn't work out, and Anna Kendrick really showed her potential here. I mean, I love Anna Kendrick. She's extremely attractive. I think she's a great actress, but this was the movie where I really think she gave her full potential. She was incredible in this movie. I think the best of one she's ever given. Jeremy Jordan, I don't know why people are saying he's over the top. I think he was perfectly casted as Jamie. These two just work so well together. Every scene worked for me, and as long, you might not like this movie as much as I do because of the way it's done, but you just have to think of it as events in their life. Think of it as events that have happened to them, things that they've been through, and then I think you'll really appreciate the last five years for what it is. It's an amazing film. I definitely recommend you check it out. It truly is fantastic, and I loved everything about the last five years. Amazing, amazing movie. If you haven't checked it out, definitely give it a watch. And I'm surprised by how many people haven't liked it. I mean, I've heard many people say, oh, it's just okay. It wasn't as good as it could have been. No, for me, it really is a masterpiece. And it's simply one of the best musical films I've ever watched. Every song is great. Every scene is great. I can't find a flaw in this movie. I've tried. I've tried to find a flaw, and I just simply can't. The last five years is simply amazing. I love everything about it. And if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Amazing, amazing film. Uh, number five is probably the most fun I've had watching any movie this year. I mean, this movie was a ton of fun, and it's mainly the reason why Mad Max is lowered, because while I love Mad Max Fury Road, this movie I just had a lot more fun with, and I was a lot more into, and when looking back, I'm like, what movie would I watch more of? Definitely this movie. Number five, it had to be on here. Star Wars The Force Awakens is number five on this list. Star Wars is just, it's awesome. It really is. Everything about this movie was awesome. It did exactly what you should do to resurrect a franchise, just like Creed. But this did it even more. It brought back the original characters, but didn't focus on them. It had new characters and focused on them and showed that this is, you know, we have new characters now. We're going to introduce them to this environment. We're going to show why they're important. I mean, Kylo Ren Talk about a character that is already very well developed. Talk about a character that people are already loving. I mean, people are loving Kylo Ren. People are loving Daisy. People are loving Finn. Not Daisy. People are... Her name is Daisy Ridley. Her real name... Her name in the movie is Ray. Her name um, in real life is Daisy Ridley. Sorry, I fucked that up. But, um... Talk about a movie that is just getting so much... Everyone's loving it. I've heard so many people talk about it. It's such a great film. It went in so many unexpected directions, and did it pay tribute to New Hope? Yes. And is it like the original? Yes, there are some points where it is like the original, but I think it just works for the story. With me, personally, I just thought, does this go with the story? Yeah, I mean, them doing some of the things that happen, I'm not going to spoil what they do, but the things that people have been complaining about really does go with the movie. It makes sense as to why they did that. So, to me, I think it was fine they did that in Star Wars. Um, the practical effects looks incredible. One shot, I never talked about this, but there is one shot in the film that just had my jaw on the floor. And if you guys don't know, it's the one where the Millennium Falcon, like, went through the snow. Holy shit, that scene. I mean, talk about an awesome scene. That was awesome. I loved it, and just, that was amazing. I absolutely loved um, Star Wars Force Awakens. It's an extremely entertaining film. If you haven't checked it out, Check it out now. Amazing movie. I loved everything about Star Wars Force Awakens, and it definitely is number five. Now, my top four is very difficult because all four of these films I absolutely love. All four of them I think you definitely should check out. Three of these you probably have never heard of. I mean, maybe you've heard of them here and there, but they're not that popular of films, and I wish they were. Number four is a movie that actually isn't going to be released in America until March of next year, but I'm counting it as a 2015 film because that's when I watched it, and... I had to put this movie on my list. I just had to. And I feel like if I watched it next year, it would not be on my list, unfortunately. And I need this movie to be recognized. I need more people to know about this movie. Number four is a movie that just came out of nowhere. I remember I heard about it, and I thought, that sounds a very interesting concept. And I didn't know who it was going to be. I really didn't know if they were going to execute it well. I didn't know if the movie was even going to be that great. But number four, without a doubt, is The Lobster. The Lobster is one of the most different, daring films I've ever seen. I mean, 
there's so much to love about this movie. This movie is not like other films at all. In no way is this movie like other films. I mean, in the sense that the details, it's a very detailed film. It's a film that has a lot to say about life. It's a movie where you need to examine conversations. Colin Farrell was incredible in this movie. The deep metaphors given to each character were fantastic. It's really a film about why we love and why we need love and why it's important and how it's going to make us go crazy without it. And it really is extremely effective. I loved everything about it. Lobster is an incredible film, and if you haven't seen it already, definitely check it out. It's a film you do need to examine, and you definitely do need to focus very intently on when you watch it, but if you can get behind the weird concept, I definitely think it's a much more enjoyable film than you probably think it's going to be. Um, and that's one of the reasons I love The Lobster as much as I did. Uh, number three is, for a while, number one. It really was. And I said, what movie can beat this? There really isn't going to be a movie that can beat this. But you know what? Two other films did. And you guys may be surprised that this movie's number three. But just there were two other films that were so much better than this, that were just that much better. Not so much better, but just that much better. Just a smidge better than this movie. Number three is Room. Obviously, Room is on this list. Room is so impressive. Everything about Room is just so, so great. I love everything about this movie. I mean, just the fact that it's all told through Jack's eyes, you know, this young five-year-old kid who doesn't really understand the world yet. He didn't even know there was an outside world. And us just seeing things, you know, it's not that big of a deal because he's just a kid and he doesn't really fully comprehend these ideas was a genius idea. I mean, I've heard people say, oh, um, you know, the character of Ma, Brie Larson's character, is not very well developed, but I would completely disagree. I think she's perfectly developed. I think they, you know, um, gave her the perfect amount of character development in the movie that it's just not focused on because, again, a child can't understand those ideas, and it's perfectly handled. That's why the movie's so uplifting. It has an extremely beautiful ending that I absolutely loved, and it really is all about home. What makes home? What What is home to us? You know, why do we, where, where is home? You know, is home just where we live, or is home where we really feel safe? You know, that really is what the movie's all about, and I definitely love the way that they examine that. But Room is an incredible film. If you haven't checked it out, I think it's A24's best accomplishment and best film that they've done. Definitely check out Room. Amazing movie. And Brie Larson better be nominated um, for Best Actress because she was amazing in this movie. As well as Jacob Tremblay. He was great, too. Number two and number one <sighs> were very hard, I have to say. These last two, I'm like, what do I do here? These both were amazing films, and I just couldn't figure out which one was better. But at the end of the day, number one was just that much more entertaining. I based it on entertainment value, based it on what movie I'd want to see more of, what movie I'd talk more about, what movie that if I were to recommend a movie from this year, what would I recommend first? And that's why. I mean, you guys may be surprised, but these both are, you know, these two films are some of the greatest films I've ever seen and probably some of my favorite movies of all time. And number two definitely is one of my favorite films of all time, and I... I wanted this to be number one. I really did. It's just there's a film that's that much better. Number two is Anonymous Lisa. Anonymous Lisa, just, I can't get over this movie. I can't get over how daring it is. I can't get over how different it is. And I can't get over how great it turned out. I mean, this is a movie that could have failed on all cylinders. It's a movie that is telling the story about a man-made connections, but it's all in claymation. It's all done through stop motion. And just knowing that... Each of these things that we're seeing were very carefully shot, like the sex scene, for example. One of my favorite scenes of the year, without a doubt. Um, amazing performances from all three of the actors, and I love that one of them is done completely by, some of them are done completely by one actor. Very cool idea the way they do that. It's such a psychological film, it's such a different film, and you'll probably never look at anime movies the same way again. It's It needs to win Best Anime Feature at the Oscars, it's an incredible movie. And if you haven't seen Anonymous Lisa, I was stunned by this movie, I really was. I mean, it's very hard to stun me, but that's exactly what this did. This movie stunned me, it floored me, It I was so riveted, I was so into it. It's a very short film as well, so you'll get through it pretty fast. But Anonymous Lisa, incredible movie. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And I can't recommend it enough. Amazing, amazing film. But my number one, and you might be surprised that Anonymous Lisa is not number one, but 
It's just, looking at these two films, after I saw this movie, I'm like, I really don't know if this is better than Anna Melissa, and it might not be. I'm not saying this movie is better than Anna Melissa. That's not what I'm saying for number one. What I'm trying to say is that based on entertainment standpoint and based on enjoyment, this film just had so much more for me to talk about, and this film just had so much more that would make the number one spot for me. And it's not that Anonymous Lisa was bad, it was just this movie I felt just had so much more that I loved about it. And without a doubt, my number one is The Hateful Eight. And yes, I know it's the most recent movie I reviewed, you guys can be like, whatever, it's the most recent movie I reviewed, da 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 things like that. But really looking at this movie, this is my favorite movie of the year. It has everything I love. An amazing cast. Um, really, an amazing cast. Everyone in this movie is fantastic. They all give fantastic performances. Sam Jackson, uh, Walton Goggins, everyone was great. It's funny. It's shocking as hell. I didn't predict a single thing that happened in this movie. I never was bored. I was into it the whole time. It had an extremely compelling plots and a very interesting mystery that I really loved and Quentin Tarantino's very sharp dialogue really shows that Quentin Tarantino has still got it one of the best films he has ever made um extremely just different I love the you know the tributes to old film I just loved everything about The Hateful Eight it has everything that makes a great film it just does that's why The Hateful Eight is great it just everything about it works and it's very rare for me to say yo everything worked in that movie there was nothing wrong with it but that's exactly what The Hateful Eight did everything just worked everything fit in perfectly there was not a single thing that didn't work. You know, Jennifer Jason Lee was great. Kurt Russell was great. Everything was just great about The Hateful Eight. And knowing that the screenplay was leaked, you know, the movie still happened. That's one of the things that really impressed me the most. An amazing ensemble cast. An amazing movie overall. If you haven't checked out The Hateful Eight, do yourself fair because it is by far, without a doubt, in my opinion, the best film of 2015. It's audacious. It's daring. It's different. And... That, in my opinion, is why it is my number one film of 2015. But overall, guys, that is it. That I'm done with 2015 films, and I'm I'm pretty surprised. This year's gone by very, very fast. But yeah, that's it for 2015. Um, really great year. Definitely turned out to be a much better year for movies than I thought it would be. Um, at first I was a bit worried because it just wasn't really that great. But 2016 is shaping up to be a really great year as well. Hopefully, 2016 will give us some really great films. Um, but let me know what your top 10 is, and I know that it was interesting for me to do a top, you know, I, I know you guys are going to be like, why do you do a top 15? Like I said, there were just some films I didn't want to leave out. I didn't want to leave out things like Kingsman or Creed. I didn't want to leave those things out, um, just because they were just great movies, and I really do want to talk about them, and I, and every single one of these movies I would watch again. That's really what I base it on, is how much I've watched it again. The Hateful Eight and Anna Lisa are both movies that I watch over and over again, I can't recommend enough. Um, but overall, guys, let me know what your top 15 or 10, whatever you want to do, 20, whatever movies are of 2015. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, what do you think of my list? Definitely don't, if you guys have a problem with my list, it's, it's my list, honestly. Don't blame me about my list. Don't uh, complain about my list. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on your list. What do you think of 2015 overall um, in terms of movies? What movies are you looking for in 2016? And I will see you guys in the next video, which will be for my January movie preview. I'm, again, like I said, I'm done with 2015, so now focusing on 2016. I will be catching up on TV shows as well. But I am so happy to have reviewed so many movies in 2015. I mean, I reviewed over 120 films. That's I think that's pretty impressive. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to brag here. I'm just saying I think that's really impressive that I watched 120 films. Um, actually, 125, so that's even more impressive. But um, overall, guys, let me know what you guys thought of this list. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And then I will see you guys in my next video, which will be for my January movie preview of 2016. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.